Hey everybody, I was just going to show you a little upgrade I'm doing to the system here. I got a PWA uh, charge controller here. And it's showing a little bit low voltage because I got everything on, on the light so the camera can see it good. So what's going on? I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn this switch on. I'm overdriving this charger. The, you'll see the voltage jump all over the place. And the reason it's jumping all over the place, this controller is charging my battery bank. And I could live with it, but being anal retentive as I am, I don't like the voltage showing me it's jumping all over the place. Technically, it's really not jumping like it's showing because this charger, they're cheaper, and it can't keep up. It keeps clipping, clipping the voltage, shutting it off, shutting it on, shutting it off because I'm getting so much voltage in there. And the reason I'm getting so much voltage, these are good for about 200 200 watts i'm driving 400 watts it's rated at 500 watts but in reality they handle about 200 watts so i want to do a little experiment when i wired all this up so i'm going to show you watch this voltage see it jumping all over the place if you notice the lights flickered off and on a little bit, well, this charge controller had to keep up and figure out what was going on. So I'm getting full sun right now. So let me turn it back off. And look, it's already charged that battery bank pretty good. So it's working, but I don't like it. I'm a control freak. So I'm going with an MPPT. And there's the brand. I'm not sponsored. These charge controllers, this is the third one I'll be installing. I'm real happy with them. They make a, a newer model now. I wouldn't say these were closeouts, but uh, they're getting harder to find. And since I've got two that are working real good, I'd like to have one for uh, if one goes out and it's critical, I can swap it out. I've got one out in the shop. So this is going to drive my freezer. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is I'll be wiring this thing up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these wires that are here and bring them over here. So, uh, pretty simple setup. Let me show you how it's working. Another reason I like these uh, these charge controllers is it comes with a, a, a thermometer uh, stat. Plugs in right here. It comes with it. You put it near the batteries and this charge controller will know the temperature and it helps the float and everything, the charging circuit and all that for the batteries. It comes with the interface. All I've got to do is tell what kind of battery it is, if it's sealed or wet. And uh, it takes it from there. You can do this. You can also use these charge controllers with a laptop. But this kit came with the, the controller, the temp probe cable with the temp, and this charge controller. So let me go in here and I'll show you what it looks like when it's working. And I really like these things. So, me being a little anal retentive, I like looking over here and seeing that green light flash. If it's flashing, it's charging. And with this controller, you can see that it's got the icon showing the voltage is coming in. You can see the voltage that's coming in, the amperage, everything at a glance. And my this is for my refrigerator, and I'm at 31. It's a pretty solid charge controller. I haven't had any trouble with these. Something I do, you'll see this washer I got there. I like an air gap on these things. Uh, they don't get hot, but hey, if you got air flowing around a component, it just makes them last longer. So what I did, we'll go back in here. What I did for an air gap, I just want to try something different. Kind of match the cabin a little bit more in here see the wood i've got an air gap air can flow and come out i think that's pretty critical also i like these things that come with a ground lug and i can go right excuse me i can go right there to that ground bar that i got so it'd be easy to wire up and the next scene we'll uh we'll show you how it's working and uh, appreciate you watching and hanging out with me and just something to learn like i said these are good for about 200 watts. And I've got 200 watt panels on this one. And you can see 
the sun's barely hitting those panels right now and it's charging so i'm going to leave this charge controller i like knowing what my panels are doing on these these are the ones that are on my sun shields that are above my windows this is just kind of an afterthought uh, component system that i put in i was putting the sun shields up and i said you know i ought to just go ahead and put panels on them and uh, they'll give me the last bit of sun in the evening so uh hopefully i'll get the best of both worlds so next thing we're going to be wiring this thing up and I, I another reason i want to make this video is i want to show you an M mppt versus these cheaper ones and what you get versus what you get if that makes sense got a small system these are great got a bigger system definitely go with these all right we're back so just to walk through this real quick there's the i call it the charging circuit this comes from the batteries and it's gone up to the charger this is the roof goes here goes to the charger see the double flash my bank is full good way to read it right there and let's go right here here's the one for that mpt we're full so i want to go over something real quick if you have your panels in parallel and that means you went from red to black red to black and kept skipping the wires instead of just going black and red this is very crucial. You have to turn the battery circuit on first to that MPT, MPPT. If you do not, and you're running higher voltage and you turn the roof or wherever you got your panels mounted on first, the panels mounted first and you turn that circuit on and it's a higher voltage than your battery bank, you will smoke it. And it will freak out too because it needs to see the battery bank first. The reason it needs to see the battery bank first, it knows or it has to see what your voltage is on your battery bank first to know what's going on. That is crucial. That is something not in the owner's manual. If it is, I can't find it because it's in Chinglish. Turn the batteries on first. I'm going to pause turn the batteries on first if you do not that will smoke and i mean fire alarm smoke need to know that so i want to show you one more thing with these mt50 monitors they're awesome you go down here go to four one two three four hit okay now you see the flood you get to pick a menu a flooded and everything else that goes with it jail and all that you'll notice that i'm at 200 amp hours i'm gonna have a battery bank right now i do not have a battery bank i'm only one running one deep cycle rv battery um, i've been playing around with this right now it's just for lights and a fan uh, I've been slowly building the components while I've got money. One day this will run a freezer. So for me, a freezer is critical mass. I want everything to work perfect before I have to depend and know that this system works. Everything will be debugged. I know the circuits will work reliably. Then I will run the freezer on it because think about it. If it's not going to run good or you don't have everything debugged and you can trust it, Say the circuit trips and the meat thaws out and all that meat and vegetables that you had in it and be ruined or your refrigerator. So, uh, like I said, I'm very happy with these. There's the brand. There's some newer models out now. I'm sure they're basically the same components. Like I said earlier, I like going with this one because I've already got two of them. Uh, I can walk by, see that double flash, and then I know that I'm fully charged. That's just a good, warm, fuzzy feeling for me. So, uh, these cheaper ones versus these more expensive ones to me it's worth it i wanted to play around and see the differences and i also want to see how much that could really take they say it's rated at 500 uh, watts i was not drinking the kool-aid on that but i wanted to see 
Well, did you waste your money? Uh, not really, because I'm running a charger like this. You notice I didn't throw this one away or put it back in the box. But now I've got an, a spare one. If this ever goes bad, I can have this for a backup. Ta-da! And being off-grid and being self-reliant, to me, that's just a smart way to go. If this does go bad, I've got one out in the shop. Like I said earlier, I can swap it out and get online and try to find me another component. You need to be self-reliant. You need to be able to work on this stuff yourself. So uh, I feel really good. I'm seeing a double flash and everything's working good. So uh, I appreciate you hanging out with me and I wanted you to see the real world difference. I know the, the uh, YouTube engineers will really over talk it. If you got a small system, 200 watts or less, go with that. They work. I've got that on another system that I'm using to drive my lots in the other part of the cabin. I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with this one. But if you're running something crucial in over 200 watts, get an MP MPPT. I'm real happy with them. So anyway, I appreciate you hanging out with me. And uh, we've, we've learned something together. And hopefully this saved you some money. And I got to show you uh, how all this works and save you some money. So I appreciate you watching. And uh, take care and God bless.